Welcome all. In this video, we are going to discuss different characteristics of sound wave. So, more particularly, we will discuss amplitude, wavelength, frequency, pitch, loudness, timbre, duration, which are related to the sound wave. But before that, let us understand the sound wave. So, you have um, in day to day life, you hear different type of sounds. Some sounds are audible and some are not. Some sounds are pleasant and some are unpleasant. Some are soft, some are very loud and some are noisy and some are related to music. Some are related to different instruments. Okay. So, you differentiate all those sound according to your perception. Okay. So, whenever you hear a sound, what does your brain tells you regarding the sound it's like you by hearing a sound you can say whether the sound is very loud or it is very soft or you can um, by hearing a sound you can say whether a person is talking or some instrument is getting played so you can perceive that okay and apart from that suppose um, you hear someone playing a guitar then if you have seen the guitar, there are different strings present in it. So, when you vibrate a particular string, it produces one type of sound, but when you like um, vibrate another string, the sound produced is different. Okay. So, the production of sound wave that depends on the type of instrument and uh, the the way it is perceived it depends on different um, factors like loudness or pitch or duration all these things okay so while the physiological uh, definition includes a subject's reception of sound the physics definition recognizes that sound exists independently of individual's reception. What does it mean? We will just discuss after some time. Now, we know that sound wave is a longitudinal wave in which the particles of the medium vibrate back and forth in the same direction in which the wave is moving. So, the sound wave travels in terms of compression and expansion of the particles present in the medium. So, when you represent that in the form of a wave, it will look like this. So, here you can see the high pressure area that means the compression they represent the crest and the rarefaction area or the low pressure area it represents the trough in the wave. So, once the wave is generated, then this wave has different characteristics like wavelength, uh, time period or you know amplitude, all the things are there. So, we will be discussing that as we proceed. So, as I have said, uh, the sound wave can be mainly described by four characteristics such as amplitude, frequency, wavelength and velocity of sound in which it propagates. Now, coming to the perception of sound, the physical characteristic of sound wave influence some psychological features. Okay. So, those are loudness which depends on amplitude, pitch which depends on the frequency, timbre and tempo. Okay. So, if you know something about the instrument, musical instrument, then I think you have a knowledge on timber and tempo. If you do not have that, then uh, subsequently we will be discussing all these things in detail. But first coming to the amplitude, amplitude is the size of vibration and this determines how loud the sound is. Okay. So, if your amplitude 
of the sound wave is small then we can say that the sound is not very loud it is soft ok. But when the amplitude increases the loudness will also increase. So, the amplitude of the sound wave is measured in terms of power and the unit is decibels. And uh, we perceive the amplitude as loud or soft ok depending upon the amplitude. Now, studies in hearing show that we perceive sound at low and very high frequencies as being softer than sound in the middle frequencies even though they have the same amplitude. While the amplitude is a quantitative or physical measurement, the loudness is a qualitative and perceptual measure of how loud the sound is. Now, there are few examples of loudness in decibel. So, the breathing sound is having you know the loudness of 10 decibel, normal speech is 60 decibel. If you are in a concert then the loudness is around 115 decibel and the pain threshold of human ear is around 120 decibel. Okay, there are many examples um, or many uh, sound there you will you can find many example of different sounds having different decibels. So, um, I mean you can remember that if you want to, but please remember the pain threshold of human ear is 120 decibel. Now, let us discuss the frequency. The frequency is the number of pressure variation cycles in the medium per unit time or if you say it in a more simple manner then it is the number of cycles per second and unit is known to everybody. The unit of frequency is Hertz. This frequency determines the pitch of the sound. Human hearing lies within the range of 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. But as we get older, the upper range of our hearing decreases. Hum human speech generally falls in the range of 85 Hertz to 1100 Hertz. Now, uh, what about the sound waves which are below 20 Hertz and which are above 20 kilohertz? So, the sound wave which are below 20 hertz are called as infrasonic waves or infrasound. While higher frequency which are above 20 kilohertz are known as ultrasonic waves or ultrasounds. So, this is the frequency of sound um, and the average range of hearing in different animals. So, if you see the human being the frequency range is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, but the frequency range of bat it will be in you know in the ultrasonic range or the sound is ultrasound. So, sometimes when bat produce the sound then normal human ear um, like uh, no, a human being will not be able to hear that sound because that does not fall in the range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz ok. Now, coming to pitch uh, as I have already said it is the sensation of frequency ok and high pitch sound correspond to high frequency and low pitch sound correspond to low frequency as shown in this figure. So, if the sound wave has high frequency. So, we can say the pitch is high and if the frequency is low we can say that the pitch of the sound is low. Now, let us discuss wavelength. So, wavelength is the minimum distance in which a sound wave repeat itself or we can say it is the length of one complete wave and it is denoted by lambda. So, if you see this figure 
from this crest to the next crest the distance between these two points we can call it as wavelength and it is denoted by lambda. In other words we can also say that in a sound wave the combined length of a compression and an adjacent rarefaction is also called wavelength. How is it so? We from the previous slides we know that the high pressure area is represented by compression and it is represented as a you know trough area in the sound wave. So, this part represent compression and the adjacent part this part it represents expansion or rarefaction. So, this point tells that the combined length of a compression that means this and an adjacent rarefaction means up to this is also defined as the wavelength of the sound wave. I hope this point is clear now. Now we will discuss the velocity of sound. So, given um, uh, like um, the relationship between the speed of sound and the frequency and wavelength is given by this expression that is c equals to lambda wave f uh, lam where lambda is the wavelength and f is the frequency of propagation. Uh, given a particular medium at a particular temperature the velocity of the sound is constant. So, in air at 20 degree centigrade and at one atmospheric pressure the speed of sound propagation is around 343 meter per second. Now, we will discuss timber and uh, timber is the you know perceptual um, quantity whereas, if you represent the same as a physical quantity then it is represented by spectrum. Okay. So, you know the meaning of spectrum right. So, a spectrum generally displays the different frequencies that is contained in a waveform or that is contained in a sound wave. Okay. So, a sound spectrum is a representation of sound usually a short sample of sound in terms of the amount of vibration or in terms of the amount of frequency or uh, yeah in terms of the amount of frequency. Okay. So, the team uh, now we will come to the you know uh, perceptual uh, uh, parameter that is timber. So, timber refers to the characteristic sound or tone of an instrument. Okay. So, if you consider a piano, the sound produced by a piano is much different than the sound produced by a violin or um, uh, to that of sound produced by a flute or by the uh, or it. Mm, differs from the sound produced by a you know mm, uh, guitar. Okay. So, how can you differentiate it? So, it can be differentiated by the amount of frequency contained in it. So, if you plot the spectrum then the spectrum of the sound produced by different instruments will be different. Okay. So, here I have given an example. So, see this is uh, I mean this is just uh, for example point, um, point I have just given this. So, the waveforms of different uh, sources like tuning fork or flute or human voice or violin are different. Okay. So, we can say that the timber of a musical instrument is determined by its physical construction and shape. Sounds with different timbers have different wave shapes or in other words different frequencies. So, now I hope you understand the term timber or spectrum. Now, we will discuss the next term that is tempo and it is related to the physical quantity duration. So, those who play the instrument they are well acquainted with these two terms uh, that is tempo and timber. Okay. But still now we will discuss uh, the tempo here. So, in music the duration is the amount of time that a pitch 
or tone that lasts okay so they can be described as long short or taking some amount of time okay so you can say that the tempo is long the tempo is short or this uh, the tempo is taking 1 millisecond of sound uh, time or you can express tempo in that manner so it generally represents the duration to which a particular type of uh, sound lasts the duration of a note or tone influences the timbre and rhythm of a sound a classical piano piece will tend to have notes with longer duration than the notes played by a keyboard at a pop concert so in physics the duration of a sound or tones begins once the sound registers and it ends after it cannot be detected again okay so this is what is duration and it is related to the tempo so i hope you have understood the different uh, parameters uh, by which you can characterize a sound wave and the perceptual uh, factors related to it thanks for watching my video